Boo! Oh, hey! Damn it, I wanted to surprise you. But uh, I know you're here. You can't surprise me. What if I showed up in another game? Well, that would be surprising. And another game. And another game. Well, okay, calm down. And another game. And another game. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, there are certain patterns in the Monster Hunter series, certain things that over time have simply become a sort of tradition. Rathalos and Rathian are the greatest example of this. Originally, they were just icons of the first Monster Hunter, the original game, but they've been in every single Monster Hunter game released since then. They've evolved over time, and Rathalos himself is at the point of being considered the flagship of the entire series as a whole. But they aren't the only ones with this sort of kind of pattern. Maybe the only ones to have it all the way from the first game, but not the only ones as a whole. This pattern also started to develop a little bit among some Elder Dragons, most specifically Teostra and Kashala Deora, who have been a part of more Monster Hunter games than they have missed. There is good reason for this, as at least compared to many others of the creatures known as Elder Dragons, they are relatively simple. Emperor of Flame, Master of Wind, that's not his official title, but it sort of fits what he does, neither of them have particularly complex mechanics. Both of them are generally straightforward, both as monsters to understand and as fights to undertake. This role is perfect, and many would say that this sort of entry-level Elder Dragon position is extremely important in every single game. You need some of them in all of them, as they are sort of a perfect middle ground between the height of non-Elder Dragon monsters and the crazy shenanigans that you can get into in the back end of the roster of every Monster Hunter game. But today I'd like to put in my two cents as to why a different monster should get one of these slots in the future. Nergigante. Loved by many, this monster is pretty much universally enjoyed. Even if you don't think he is Gog's gift to Monster Hunter, you probably think he's a pretty decent fight at the absolute minimum. Well, I think he should be put into the position of returning monster. Not just once or twice occasionally, but I think he is quite possibly the exact perfect monster to put in that entry-level dragon slot in pretty much every game. To mix up the repeated inclusions of Teostra and Kashala. If anything, he may even be more fitting than those two are to this particular role, and today I'm here to tell you why. Because I really like him. Realistically, I consider him to be an amazing monster in general. His visual design is just extremely pleasing to me. He's just a big beefcake of an Elder Dragon using that classic Elder Dragon skeleton, but widening it out a little bit. Then he is covered in spikes. He uses these spikes in combat, and his moveset as a whole is just entirely physical. He doesn't give you any strange debuffs, nothing unique or new to deal with. He just hits you. He hits you hard, and he hits you with love. He can shoot out his spikes with a bit of range to catch you off guard a little bit, but you get used to this fast and it is easily dealt with once you know about it. His fight as a whole is just extremely fun to take part in, and if for no other reason than that, I, I think he should be a frequently returning monster because he looks great and is enjoyable to go against. I think, like with the other monsters that come back often, this would only get refined and improved over time as well, meticulously upgrading small little bits of his fight until he feels perfect. That said, I think his fight is already sort of exactly correct for that title of entry-level Elder Dragon. Because more than anything, what these are supposed to do is just be a bit of a teaching moment. A moment where hunters are supposed to come to get to grips with the higher tier of monsters and a higher tier of difficulty of gameplay to come. And I think Nergigante is the perfect creature for that. The main reason overall that I think he fits in the slot is simply his learnability, his patterns. If you don't know how to fight Nergigante, if you have never seen him before, he can be extremely imposing, very threatening, and actually quite a difficult fight. If you don't manage his spikes, they will grow and turn black making previously squishy parts bounce your weapon away at any sharpness, keeping you on the edge of your seat trying to keep up with the fight just barely, and if you fail to break his spikes for long enough, he'll pull out his dive bomb attack, his super move, which can be absolutely lethal, but also has a relatively forgiving dodge timing. <laughs> There are two main components that I think make this very valuable to have around to teach new hunters the ropes when it comes to Elder Dragons, why I think that Nergigante was the perfect first Elder other than Zora for us to fight in Monster Hunter World, where the vast majority of the community at this point first started playing Monster Hunter, and why I think he would be a perfect starting Elder Dragon in most Monster Hunter games to come. First up, his spike mechanic. It is just so perfectly deceiving. At first it just looks like something that happens while you're fighting him. As he keeps going, spikes will grow out of very 
various parts of his body, and over time they will turn black and harden, making those body parts practically immune to damage. Enough black parts form, and then he'll dive bomb to launch them all at you and reset back to no spikes. But what you learn as you do this fight more than once is you can break the spikes just like any other part break. And if you break them, not only will you slowly reset his most powerful attack, stopping him from ever launching it off if you do it right, but also get a knockdown on the monster as a reward. This creates a very learnable and valuable cycle. Break a spike, get a knockdown, start hitting another spike, get another knockdown. Up until this point in most Monster Hunter games, you can just easily get away with just mashing your weapon into the singular weakest part of a monster for the entire hunt, never swapping where you attack, never giving it much thought other than that. But Nergigante just actively encourages you to attack different parts of him every minute or so, following around his pattern of spikes, and then he rewards you with downtime to launch off your strongest attacks against him, while also simply not doing his strongest attack against you if you can do it right repeatedly. This is about as good as a definition as you can get of a learnable monster fight. Don't get me wrong, you can learn monsters at just general attack patterns in any fight, get used to what they do and work out how to avoid each attack individually, but this makes that learning a proper mechanic, a proper inclusion of a fight. It invites you to focus on understanding it for way more reward than most other hunts will give you, and that to me is a prime example of what should be a perfect entry-level Elder Dragon. Secondly, then, is his attacks in general. He is absolutely full of telegraphs. The vast majority of his attacks are visually different from each other and produce different results. A great example of this is when he slams his head into the ground, then a moment later pumps it a bit further to shoot out spikes. The head slam is an attack, but it has limited range and is easy to dodge, but it also serves as an early warning of the spikes about to come if you know he's got spikes on his head. A beautiful animation and telegraph as a whole. Check out the telegraph. Before he does his big dive bomb, he always does a roar as well. He flies up into the air and then he dives down. The roar is an early warning to sheathe your weapon, and then when he starts to dive is the perfect time to do a Superman jump evade to avoid all of the damage. His fight is all just one giant learning experience meant to show you how to properly learn to fight a monster. Before Elder Dragons, you can mostly get away by just flinging yourself around, but Elder Dragons are a bit of a step up, and having one that teaches you these types of mechanics right at the entry gate seems like a perfect inclusion in my eyes. Another reason that I really do want Arigante to return that maybe isn't quite as fitting to this argument is simply that he never got a real base master rank version. We got Runer in Ergigante, but Runer is a variant. He has his own mechanics, he does bleed, and his own things going on. I'd love to see just a regular Nergigante, but in master rank to see what changes they'd make for him and just how exactly they'd give him a step up in difficulty aside from just numerical differences. That's it really. All in all, what I'm saying here is relatively simple. There is a class of monsters within the series that are Elder Dragons, but on the lower end of the difficulty of Elder Dragons. These elders show up in the vast majority of games and they exist to teach you how to fight the even tougher creatures that will come afterwards. They're a sort of introduction to the end game concept of a Monster Hunter game, meant to show new players how to evolve their hunting prowess and remind veterans of what is to come while also not being such an insurmountable challenge that it stops you from enjoying the game. A learning experience. And I think that there are few, if any, better learning experiences than fighting Nergigante. He seems so challenging at first, and without any knowledge you could easily struggle against him for ages. But the first time that you break a spike and see him fall over, it all just starts to fall into place in your mind, making it clear that this is simply a fight that is as hard or as easy as you make it yourself. And I think that makes him the perfect creature to get a frequent spot in the series as that sort of entry-level elder. I think he should come back. I think he should come back many, many times. And I think that he would serve within this role perfectly. What do you all think? Should Nergigante pick up the mantle of entry-level elder and give Teostra and Kashala a little bit of a break? Or is he more impactful only coming in every once in a while? After all, he is also one of the cooler elders out there, just visually if nothing else. It's possible that having him show up too often could also be a negative. What do you think about it? Like if you like the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye